A friend of mine, Steve Klar from Rocadian Development Group, a company that develops, builds, and renovates nursing homes, was traveling to Cincinnati, nearby Kentucky. I had a client who asked us to come look at two properties, and we were a little bit short on time, so Thanksgiving, while everyone was sleeping, I took the early flight, uh, 6 a.m. He got off the flight, rented a car, started driving, and all of a sudden, it hit him. He felt this wave of exhaustion come over him. Here I was in Kentucky on Thanksgiving. You could literally hear the birds chirping, but I was desperate for a coffee and just looked for the nearest gas station. He gets into the gas station, walks over to the back to make himself a cup of coffee. And I hear that the owner at the register is on the phone, he's speaking Arabic. I walk up to the counter, I put my coffee down, I take out my credit card, and he goes, good morning, how are you, without even looking up. And I said, alhamdulillah, and he stopped dead in his tracks. Alhamdulillah which means thank God. Now the guy is intrigued. How does this Jew know Arabic? So he turns to the guy on the phone, he says, I gotta hang up. He hangs up and he turns to Steve and he says, where are you from? How do you know my language? How do you know Arabic? I said, I went to school in Israel. I have children in Israel. I picked it up along the way. And he starts telling me how he loves us. And I said, you, you, you love us? What do you mean you love us? And he says, I love you guys. I said, what guys? He says, the Jewish people. I said, what do you love about Jewish people? He says, well, it's because of what happened over 50 years ago when I lived in Ramallah, in Israel. We are 10 brothers and sisters. We stay in one room. We were poor in the camp. We are the poor family in the camp. You know what's mean so poor? When you have no bread or oil or any, nothing, nothing in the home. In order to help support my family, I had to travel across the lines into Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, there is a corner. You stay there with your food bag and people, they need any labor. They pick you up from there. They pay you every day this amount. The guy we work for him is a Jewish guy. His name is Moise. It's called Beit Safafa between Jerusalem and Bethlehem. We wear bent houses. We was doing good. We work and make him come good, and he's happy about us. We were good workers. And then the Yom Kippur War broke out in 1973. The Arabs launched a surprise attack to regain some of the territories in Israel that they lost in the Six Day War in 1967. And they closed immediately all the lines, all the borders, and we couldn't travel to Jerusalem to find work like we used to. Even after the war ended, we were still afraid to get into Jerusalem to get work. We cannot keep working war there. There's no safe. They were dirt poor. Not what you and I imagine, but absolutely, literally nothing. Not a chair to sit on. You have no food in home, easy. You have no bread. There is no welfare looks like USA to help you with food stamps or somebody, nothing. And one day, the Israeli army, bunch of soldiers come into Ramallah and they're asking for my name. They're looking for me. Everybody's scared. Everybody thinks to arrest me, the army that time. Of course, he was terrified, but they found him and they knocked on his door. And out of the Jeep comes this contractor, Moshe, his name was, who also was a reserve general in the Israeli army during the war. So he was able to get these soldiers to join him in Ramallah. He stuck his hand into his bulletproof vest and took out an envelope and handed it to him and said, here's your paycheck, I'm sorry, I wasn't able to pay you before the war broke out. And it absolutely blew him away. He come in where we live with the army to pay me what, whatever days I work for him. And now I'm here 50 plus years later and you walk into my gas station. I cannot tell you how much I love Jews. He's based here in Kentucky, but he owns more than 24 gas stations. He builds parking lots and truck stops. He's a big tycoon. You know, whatever he paid me, 60, 70, 100 dollars, that my all labor. For me, that time, I swear to God, more than millions. We were so poor. I swear, if I know the full name, I'm going looking for him. I give him a hug and kiss him, and I tell him, you teach me big lesson in my life. And then he said, shortly after the Yom Kippur War, my family moved to Kuwait, and we built a company, construction company. For the next 15 years, we grew the company, we were very successful, and then in 1990, Saddam Hussein attacked and tried to invade Kuwait. His army came in, overtook, destroyed, confiscated, stole everything we owned. They took everything, even my car. 
I run to the bank. The bank, it was empty, just walls to take some money to buy milk for my kids. These are our brothers, our Arab brothers. And at that point, I thought to myself, wow, look at the difference. The Jewish guy, after two months, is coming with the army, looking for my name, and he found me. He didn't know where I left. He came with the army, and he found me, and he paid me my work money. In Kuwait, they took everything. Everything. I was really blown away how he was blown away that here we are almost 50 years later and he sees someone walking into the gas station early in the morning on a Thanksgiving with the yarmulke and he remembers something kind that was done to him so many years before. Even as I went to Kentucky to interview Akram, I can feel the warm feelings that he had towards me and the crew, his willingness, his desire to spread that message, all because Moshe, this general, acted in an honorable and honest way.